So we're now going to bring on our next guest, Erin uh, Aubrey Kaplan, very familiar. I would say, you know, I hope she thinks I'm a friend because I think she's a friend of mine. Erin, are you on the screen eventually? Because I was told I'm that. Here. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Erin. What's going on? Oh, not much, Gustavo. How are you doing? Good, good, good. And we also have an assembly member from the area as well. Assembly member Brian, how are you? Uh, it's good to be with you all. Fantastic. So, initial thoughts coming off of Sunday. Was it a whoof? Were you angry? Where, where were you? Because everyone who pops on our screen isn't necessarily a Rams fan. Uh, Let's go to the assembly member first and Aaron, because I have a question for Aaron. So go for it, assembly member. Yeah, I, I think if we all did our job as well as Aaron Donald does his job, California <laughs> would be a good place. Hmm. Uh, I was cheering, I was excited uh, that halftime show to see uh, Snoop, Dre, Kendrick, everybody doing their thing. Uh, LA, LA was very proud. No, totally. Aaron, you wrote an op-ed for the Los Angeles Times. You've been writing for years, actually, about Inglewood and specifically the impact that SoFi and all this development has. And you're writing, I think it's great, but when I interviewed the mayor for uh, Inglewood, James Butts, and I mentioned your name, he sighed. He was <laughs> not happy to hear your name. So... Oh. Just remind, uh, tell people, what do you write about, you know, the warnings that you have about SoFi and all this? Everyone's all happy right now, but you say, like, it's not always going to be happy. It's not necessarily happy. Uh, yeah. Um, well, first of all, the traffic was great. Um, they, find, they seemed to solve the traffic problem on Sunday that they could huh. not solve in the regular season. Um, it was, that, that was good. But I, my issue all along has just been um, uh, kind of, like, what does Inglewood want? What's best for Inglewood? You know, we lived through the sports uh, franchise of the Lakers and, um, you know, 40 years of the Lakers didn't translate into development for Inglewood or any, or betterment really for the city. People, people come in, they come out. And I, I hope the SoFi uh, phenomenon will change that model. History is against it, but um, I would like to see, I would like to see somehow this, this develop, this particular development uh, beat back gentrification, uh, benefit everybody in the city, um, you know, uplift the economy, keep, keep, keep housing affordable. I don't know how this is all going to happen, but, um, you know, the jury is still sort of out at this point. Uh, Assemblymember Bryan, uh, to, to that point, uh, it's our understanding that you fought extremely hard to make sure that the jobs that were being offered to the community weren't your typical low paying, no benefits, uh, minimum wage jobs, but actually unionized in order to get higher wages. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely. But the real fight was Unite Here Local 11 uh, and their members and the residents of Inglewood, right, to make sure that, um, you know, as, as Aaron mentioned, you have this trade off where you're promised a stadium. You don't want displacement. You don't want gentrification. So what you're told is it'll bring jobs. Uh, but the community doesn't want jobs. They want livable wage jobs. Yeah. They want union jobs. Right. And so Unite Here Local 11 is, is working SoFi Stadium. We're really, really proud of that. Uh, but the concerns that have still been raised are, are concerns that we've got to keep a close eye on. We've got to keep the neighborhood and be able to invest in it at the same time. No, you don't want, uh, you know, Inglewood, legendary black enclave. You do not want it completely gentrified, completely lose all that history that you saw during the halftime show, that you saw in the stands, that you saw all around. But that's always the great riddle, right? How do you get both? How do you continue to improve a neighborhood and have these fantastic facilities like a SoFi Stadium without pushing out the people who makes the neighborhood a neighborhood to begin with? Um, are you satisfied with the progress that's been made right now by Kroenke and his team in terms of meeting those needs of the community while also celebrating, you know, the lavishness of SoFi Stadium? How, how do you think it landed, Aaron? Uh, I, think, I think it's a little too early to tell. Um, um, I mean, you know, I, I hope that uh, the Rams, the NFL, Stan Kroenke will do more than just like, you know, than window dressing. But it's really up to the city government, the city leaders. I think there's a big part to, for them to play in connecting the opulence of SoFi and all the promise it seems to hold to, to um, bettering the city. Inglewood is, I think, unless I'm mistaken, the last black, you know, significantly black town in L.A. County. And a lot is riding on its um, prosperity, um, you know. But you know, it, it. I just hope that the market forces don't overrun everything. All the good intentions, all you know, the policies that are in place, um, because I think what Inglewood needs is an economy, and um, we don't exactly have that. 
What do you want to see? What would be a representation of them doing it right? Like, I hear what you're saying in terms of you don't want people being left behind because of gentrification. What's a sign to show that they're doing it right and that people aren't being left behind? Is that for me? Yeah, that's yes. for you. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> that's for you, good trouble. <laughs> well, um, what would I like to see? Well, you know, um, uh, for one thing, I'd like to see some community input into what happens in Inglewood. Um, I, in the column that Gustavo mentioned, I talked about this long ago phenomenon of 2004 when Walmart, which Stan Kroenke was involved in, this, you know, Walmart wanted to come here yeah. and build a super the, the voters rejected that, but this particular development many years later um, did not, you know, did not require a vote. And so it just feels like the same old, same old of huge things happening, um, things with a lot of money at stake, um, and the residents don't really have a say in it. And England was a small city. This is typically what happens. The NFL locates in a small city. It's really too big a stadium for the small city, and it overtakes the city. And I just, I, I worry about the residents um, just having a say in what goes up, you know, what goes down. Yeah, no, it's a, 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 here in Southern California, we know how small it is, but just in case you're not from Southern California, it is literally a town. Like, I remember there was this great Guatemalan restaurant right across the stadium when they were construction. I still hope it's there. But when you have huge construction like that, assembly member, it directly impacts what, you know, the small town vibe of a place. So what do you hope that the Rams do or continue to do to make sure that Inglewood remains Inglewood? Yeah, I mean, the Rams as an organization and as individual players are already embedding themselves uh, in the community. And it, it's great to see that. As was mentioned earlier, it's really about leadership uh, and elected officials. Uh, Inglewood did not have rent control for a very long time. It was hard fought. It was earned. But there's a sunset provision on it right now. And I would love to make sure uh, that, that our leaders step up to not let it sunset, but instead to double down on it. Because if we let it sunset and we let rents skyrocket and then we reinstitute it, we're going to lose the neighborhood, right? And so we, we've got to put those protections in. Um, but I have a lot of confidence that the Rams leadership players otherwise are, are going to heavily invest uh, in the community because the, the good luck charm to this Super Bowl was being in Inglewood. It wasn't just the players. It was the whole community. Absolutely. Uh, Assemblyman a member, Brian, before we go, I just have one quick question for you. Do you believe you can hang upside down like 50 Cent and spit <laughs> some bars if need be? It? Uh, it, especially if Dre calls. If Dre calls, I'm upside down. I'm ready. <laughs> Assembly member Aaron, thank you so much for being on with us. Thank Everyone, you. read Aaron Aubrey Kaplan's columns. Always awesome. Whether More for the LA Times, hopefully, than the New York Times, but we forgive you for that one. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Gustavo. <laughs>